Some creatures seem doomed. Should this one be extinct? Is this giant all mouth and no action? Endless waste. Who could benefit? And we expose the king's dirty tricks. Food can be far from regular. In raw nature, meals. There's a rule every creature lives by. Eat or die. Meals are never certain. Prey can fight back. In raw nature, it's an arms race. But luck can decide who gets the upper hand? Is this animal the world's biggest victim? The wildebeest always seems to be the fall guy to Africa's greatest predators. But we're going to reveal the truth about these animals. They are victims, victims of bad publicity. Spanning two countries, Kenya and Tanzania, the vast Mara Serengeti region provides some of the richest pasture on Earth. But living here isn't all plain sailing. The rainy season fuels life. But the baking summer sun isn't so kind. Wildebeest have learned to survive the seasons by following the rains. Over a million of them make a continuous annual journey. This is probably the world's biggest meal on the move. The start of the year in southern Serengeti. Wildebeest work to a tight schedule. In just three weeks, they give birth to half a million calves. It's a numbers game. For a prey animal, it's a clever strategy. Hunters have little time to cash in on the defenseless young. In May, the rains stop. Unable to sustain the increase in hungry miles, the plains grass gets thin. The wildebeest move north. They must reach the short, sweet grasses of the Masai Mara by July. It's a two and a half thousand kilometer round trip and no vacation. Hunters are on the prowl. At this time of year, wildebeest are the main course. But these attacks are a drop in the ocean. They have little effect on the overall numbers. The constant traveling is thirsty work, and water comes at a price. These rivers are infested. Some end up paying with their lives. Not all of these casualties are due to drowning. 
as we're about to find out. Classic ambush predator. Why waste energy hunting when 200,000 tons of prime steak comes right to your door? As the wildebeest pours on their marathon quest for food, these crocs haven't left the dining table since last year's feast. Just one adult wildebeest is enough to feed this crocodile for the next 12 months. It's a matter of metabolism. Warm-blooded wildebeest need regular meals to build up body fat and maintain their temperature. Cold-blooded crocodiles use heat from the sun to control theirs, so they don't have to burn up precious calories. They only need to eat half their body weight per year to get by. At over five meters, these crocodiles are amongst the biggest in the world. is the ultimate killing machine. But once again, what may look like a massacre is barely a dent in the overall number of wildebeest. Despite the dangers, at least nine out of 10 wildebeest survive their epic journey and reach the Masai Mara. Incredible drive and strength in numbers means the wildebeest is more winner than loser. Top predator numbers have fallen as much as 90% since the 1960s, but the wildebeest population has increased five times. In a few months, the Mara grasses dry up and their stomachs leave them south again, back to their birthplace in southern Serengeti. Wildebeest travel to guarantee their meals. A giant underwater grazer must do the same. The oceans cover two thirds of our planet. From above, there's little evidence of food. But beneath lies a rich soup, key to one of nature's greatest size differences between meal giver and taker. Millions of tiny plants and animals float together in vast clouds. They're known as plankton. The microscopic plant-like plankton, or phytoplankton, relies on sunlight for its energy, so it sticks close to the surface. Relatively larger animal or zooplankton shun light and remain at depth during the day. At night, they rise to feed on the phytoplankton. Plankton grows so abundantly in our oceans, it's the foundation of the marine food chain. It 
It's usually tiny fish that feed directly on plankton. But there is a giant exception. This creature grows up to 10 meters, can weigh over three tons, and has an enormous appetite. So how does it survive on creatures less than a millimetre in length? Because it's a basking shark with a remarkable feeding system. It swims slowly close to the surface with its huge jaws agape its liver is packed with oil to keep it buoyant. It can cruise at just three and a half kilometers an hour without sinking. To feed, it expands its jaws like a giant butterfly net. Behind are gill slits that almost encircle the head. Every minute or so, the shark closes its mouth, flutters its gills and swallows. You'd think the plankton would pass straight through the slits, but they mask a hidden device. Over a thousand mucus-covered gill rakers sieve out these tiny meals from each mouthful of water. The basking shark filters a million litres of water every hour, enough to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool. It's so effective that its stomach can contain half a tonne of plankton. but there's no chance it can scoop it all up. In the right conditions, plant plankton can double its numbers every 24 hours. A litre of seawater can contain over 100 million plankton so there's plenty of chance to restock. That's good news for basking sharks and for us too. If plankton disappeared, the results would be catastrophic. It removes around 30% of all the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas too much of it, and the planet would cook. It wouldn't just be the oceanic soup that got too hot. A big mouth isn't the only way of dealing with mini meals. Our next diner goes to the opposite extreme. It has one of the smallest mouths of any mammal. The South American rainforest is its larder. This termite colony thrives on dead wood and decaying leaves, the most abundant organic material on Earth. You'd think it was inedible, but termites have special microorganisms in their gut. 
they turn an unlikely meal into living insect tissue. The colony burrows into dead branches and logs and makes a nest from chewed wood pulp. Single termites aren't much of a meal, but as a colony can house over a million residents, it's more than a snack for any insect eater. Colonies are well defended. Soldier termites patrol the boundaries. They have specially adapted heads designed for chemical warfare. Assailants are sprayed with an irritating and foul-smelling liquid. This is effective against insects, but how do the termites cope with this much larger opponent? It's a tumandua, cousin of the ground-dwelling giant anteater. It prefers to live in trees, which shares the same appetite for termites. Its long snout is packed with highly tuned scent organs, sensitive enough to tell if a termite is coming or going. If it's returning to the nest, that's the one to follow. Powerful dagger-like claws rip open and expose the colony. The tongue is covered in sticky mucus and backward pointing barbs. You'd have to be in up to your elbows to match its reach. Its mouth is narrower than your little finger, but can lap up 9,000 termites in just one sitting. So, are the termites just a pushover when it comes to termandulas? It seems not. They can fight back. Chemical signals alert the colony. The workers retreat and the soldiers attack. If they spray enough repellent, the Tamandua's powerful nose suddenly becomes its Achilles heel. It's a case of massive sensory overload. The chemicals burn the delicate membranes in its snout and the Tamandua retreats. A late victory for the termites isn't such a bad deal for the Tamandua. While it forages elsewhere, the colony will rebuild itself. It will be ready to harvest again in a matter of weeks. The anteater will remember its precise location. When it comes to food, the Tamandua's tongue is a great physical asset. Snakes use their tongues in many other ways, including trickery. Central America provides the stage. The hognose is a stout snake around a meter in length. Frogs and toads are a favorite meal. It swallows them whole. But all's not well. Something's happened to the snake. 
Many frogs and toads are poisonous, but the hognose is immune to these. So what's causing all this writhing? It's not the meal that's caused this death throw. It's the danger of being eaten itself. This indigo snakes on the prowl. Its favorite food is other snakes. But the hognose doesn't lie down and die. It just pretends to. As soon as it senses a threat, it opens its mouth and writhes as if in pain. Finally, it rolls onto its back and exudes a stink of decaying flesh, enough to put any diner off. During the death scene, a lining at the back of its throat closes to prevent it swallowing any dirt. The hognose will play dead for hours until a predator gets the message that it's off the menu. Trickery lets it survive another day. In North America, there's another con artist, but its acting isn't always up to scratch. This rattlesnake warns predators it's not to be messed with. But snakes are deaf to airborne sounds, so it has little effect on an indigo snake. Aware it's been spotted, the rattlesnake puffs itself up in an attempt to look too big to swallow. But this indigo snake won't be fooled. This meal isn't going to slip away. Indigo snakes aren't venomous and they don't constrict their prey. They just use strong jaws to immobilize it. The rattle remains a futile gesture. Once subdued, the indigo snake swallows the rattler whole and still alive. It's a lingering death and a drawn out meal. This disappearing act can take up to an hour.
Some tricks stop you being eaten. Others can get you a meal. Australia's home to a classic con artist. Skinks are small lizards, but for their size, they have giant appetites. This one's on the lookout for its favorite dish, worms. Its eyes detect the slightest movement. It edges towards its intended victim, planning a surprise attack. It gets within striking range. In an instant, death is delivered. But to the skink. Wind back time and the mystery is revealed. This wriggler's no worm. It actually belongs to a death adder. Unlike the hunting indigo snake, the death adder prefers to lure its prey into an ambush. It has the longest fangs of any Australian snake, and using them doesn't depend on luck. Its tail has evolved to mimic a writhing worm. Camouflaged, the death adder can lie motionless for many days until a mobile meal passes within range. Most snakes are long and agile. This adder's short and muscular, built for a powerful strike. It hangs on to its victim as the lethal venom takes effect. Luring your meals uses up very little energy. A small skink goes a long way. From camouflage on land to camouflage underwater, but for a very different reason, protection. The octopus is a master of disguise. Being invisible is one of the best ways to avoid being eaten. Special skin cells called chromatophores change its color. If the muscles around the chromatophores contract, more color is squeezed to the surface. If they relax, the spots are reduced to a pinpoint and the skin appears colorless. Its skin texture can also change to match rock, coral or seaweed. But there are times when the octopus has to break cover, especially when entering or leaving its lair. A 
Moray Eel has found the octopus's den and is awaiting its return. It has an excellent sense of smell. Four nostrils allow a continuous flow of water over its scent organs and alert it to approaching prey. Hidden within the shadows, it prepares to take a meal by surprise. This octopus could have avoided being eaten if it had used its secret weapon. This time, as it approaches the lair, the octopus senses that something is wrong. It strikes first. In a split second, it releases a cloud of ink a visual screen that also knocks out the eel's sense of smell. By the time the cloud clears, the octopus has escaped. But even an unsuspecting octopus has one final trick up its sleeve. When inking fails, it has no option but to fight for its life. The moray's teeth take hold, but the octopus isn't ready to give up just yet. Its suckers grip the rock like superglue. Soon it breaks free from the eel's grip, leaving just a small taste of what could have been a big meal. Losing a limb isn't life-threatening. The octopus will grow a new tentacle in no time at all. If a raw meal like sushi won't do, why not rely on others to cook and deliver dinner for you? Africa's immense table caters for this service. Despite eating well, an elephant has a very inefficient digestive system. Food passes through its body in just six hours. 50% of the nutrients in its diet come out in its dung. An adult elephant makes a deposit every 15 minutes and churns out 150 kilograms of dung each day. But fortunately, these elephants have a tiny stalker. Emerging from the ground, these beetles are desperate for food, so they follow the elephants. This particular beetle, dung means dinner. And only an elephant's will do. The adult beetles don't eat the dung. They can't swallow solids. Instead, 
They roll it in their mouth parts to squeeze out the juice. The liquid doesn't just contain plant nutrients. Organisms from the elephant's gut add to its meal. As many as 15,000 beetles can feast on a single mound of fresh elephant dung. They require nothing else in their diet, not even water. The dung beetle army helps fertilize the soil by burying vast amounts of dung. A kilo and a half can be processed and buried in just two hours. Thousands compete for the dung. Some shape it into balls to roll away so they can eat it at a safe distance from competitors. Dung beetles are incredibly strong and can shift balls 50 times their own weight. After a few weeks of feasting, they're mature and ready to breed. The female chews off and shapes a large ball of dung, a larder for her developing young. She needs to find a safe place to bury this unlikely long-term meal. The male keeps guard on his partner and her prized dung. Once at a suitable location, the female loosens the soil around the dung ball so it sinks into the ground. Eventually, she creates an underground chamber big enough to house both herself and the ball. Once they've mated, the male leaves. After laying just one egg, the female stays in the chamber for four months. Turning the ball keeps it free of fungus. The larva inside soon develops and begins to eat the ball from the inside out. When fully formed, the new adult breaks free, another janitor for the world's largest land mammal. The dung beetles use elephant dung freely. Other creatures must reward their providers. Mexico's rainforests provide the setting. Ants are renowned for their formidable appetite. A large colony can eat everything in its path in a matter of hours. But these ants are different. They're not attacking this caterpillar to get a meal. And they have no intention of eating this seedling that's being felled. The ants are actually defending this tree against ravaging insects, browsing mammals and colonizing plants. Their home is the bull's horn acacia. 
Its swollen, hollow thorns provide shelter for the stinging ants. The tree provides meals as well as accommodation. Volcano-shaped glands on its leaf stalks ooze nectar that's rich in carbohydrates. And there's a second course to come. Protein capsules on the tips of its leaflets. There is no known function for them apart from feeding the ants. It's a balanced, two-way relationship. The ants need to look no further for food throughout their life. They get bed and bored. The tree gets its own security force. Unlike the stinging ants, many creatures just take and give nothing in return. Back in Africa, there are some tiny takers who prey on a fearsome giant. One of the most feared animals in the world is the African buffalo. It can weigh three quarters of a ton. It takes a lot of grass to get an animal this big, 10 kilograms a day. The herd can be over 300 strong. It's a force to be reckoned with. In such large numbers, the buffalo is unlikely to feature on anyone's menu. But the bigger the herd, the better for one buffalo predator. And it nearly always gets its meal without any form of struggle. Ticks are a classic parasite. Unlike acacia ants, they take but give nothing in return, except for the odd disease. They spend their early life clinging to grass stems, waiting for a meal to walk by. Alerted by heat and carbon dioxide given off by a passing body, they jump ship. Once on board, they bite through the buffalo's hide and lock on feeding on its blood for several days. In one sitting, a tick can consume over 500 times its body weight. When it's bloated, it drops off, digests the meal, and repeats the blood-sucking process three times. The females then lay several thousand eggs. Once hatched, they'll join the blood-feeding merry-go-round. Ticks keep a low profile. Not so these predators. They patrol the buffalo herd looking for the young and vulnerable. Once separated from the crowd, it seems the calf looks set to become a meal. But this calf isn't ready to die. Just when the lions seem to gain the upper hand, helps on its way. The herd responds to the mother's cries. To protect their own, they unleash a fearsome combination of cunning, loyalty and brute strength.
The lions accept defeat, the herds impregnable. But this loss isn't a case of life or death for the lions. There are other ways to get a meal, as we'll see later. Lions spend the majority of their time resting or asleep, up to 18 hours a day. There's a good reason for this inactivity. Sleeping conserves energy. A lion can eat 40 kilograms of meat in one meal, a quarter of its body mass. So lions are lazy and greedy. Not quite the Hollywood image we're fed, but there's an even more surprising fact about lions. When it comes to hunting, lions have a low success rate. They're lucky to get two meals a week. Catching prey is hard work, but stealing isn't. Hyenas are excellent hunters. They're not as fast as lions, but their stamina can outmatch most animals on the plains. Within minutes of a kill, vultures advertise its location. The unlikely scavenger then moves in, exploiting the hard-earned efforts of another. It turns out that the classic image of hyenas lurking around a lion kill is often the opposite of the truth. Maybe the hunter's crown should be passed to them. Given a choice, lions wouldn't hunt. They'd rather steal. Not what you'd expect from the king of beasts. Wherever there's life, there's food. But keeping your catch is never easy. It's a constant war. Eat or be eaten. Stay ahead of the game. And raw nature always delivers.